2021 Hyundai Elantra. Today we're taking a look at the all new 2021 Hyundai Elantra. Currently in its seventh generation, this car was recently redesigned for 2021. The last few generations, the ones right before this, the fifth and the sixth, were especially successful for Hyundai. So, how does this car compare against its competition? The segment is not as popping as it once used to be, so there's not that many players left. So let's see how this car compares. Let's start with the styling. And I think, personally, this is where this car shines. When I first saw pictures of the car and the first couple of reviews, I'm like, ah, you know, it's classic Hyundai. They're doing a little bit too much. All these lines and cuts, it's not gonna look as well in real life as it may seem in pictures. But let me tell you, having seen this car in real life, I think it actually works very well. All the lines and the cuts and the swoops on the side of the body, they look super cool. And the front end, I think, is actually my favorite element or aspect of the design because they've actually done such a good job of designing the car to look low and the hood line is very low which is rare these days because of pedestrian safety requirements so Hyundai's done a good job of incorporating those requirements while making that nice sleek low design my favorite feature is actually the turn signal indicators and the front headlamps which are actually integrated into the grille as opposed to the headlamp and I think that's a really cool touch similar story in the back you have this light the tail light that stretches from edge to edge not only does that look cool and interesting, even though it's getting more common, but it also makes the car look more wide and low, which is always a good thing for car design. It always makes it look more sleek and sporty. And I think the reason why it looks like this is because Hyundai brought on Luke Donkerwalky or Donkerwalk. He was responsible at Volkswagen Auto Group for designing uh, Lamborghinis, Bentleys, and also for turning around the Seat brand when they kind of changed up Seat styling language. So he was responsible for a lot of good designs over on the Volkswagen side, and you could definitely see some of that Lamborghini influence on this car. On the street, if you see this car beside like a like an Urus, you might even see more of a family resemblance between this and the Lambo as opposed to this and something like the Palisade or another SUV in the Hyundai family. So shout out to Luke and his design team for making this car look super cool. And I think the styling of this car is, is a bit of an interesting take in its class. You know, the, the Civic, the new Civic, the 2022, has gone a little bit more conservative in its styling. The Corolla has typically always been a little bit more conservative. Mazda has gone for that more refined, luxurious take. So Hyundai going all in on this sporty look, I think will actually pay dividends because it makes it look unique in its class. All right, now let's move on to the interior. I think the interior follows a similar story to the outside in terms of styling. It looks very cool. You have this four spoke steering wheel, which again, I wasn't sold on initially, but having driven this car, I think it works well. I mean, it's easy to hold, it's comfortable, and in the preferred trim, it comes leather wrapped. So it's really easy and smooth to use in daily driving. What I enjoy about the interior styling is this cockpit view. So Hyundai is designed, everything around the driver and everything is tilted towards the driver including the main infotainment screen and you also have this kind of like grab handle that separates you from the passenger um so as the driver it feels awesome like you're in this like driver zone in this cockpit and i think that looks cool a couple passengers have said that it makes them feel a little bit isolated uh, <laughs> like they're not a part of the experience of this car because even the infotainment they can't really control but most of the time if you're just a driver driving inside this it's a cool experience Material quality is also relatively good. I mean, most of the parts that I touch are high quality. For example, the shifter is leather wrapped, which is awesome. The steering wheel is leather wrapped, which is a rare thing to have in this category of car, especially at this price point. And similar story goes for the center console and the, uh, the door pad armrest here, which is all very well padded, which is great. This part up here is hard plastic, which usually bothers me. But in this car, with the driving position that I have, I don't really actually put my arm up here very often. I use the uh, the armrest down here on the door. So it's it's okay. I mean, I think, you know, you gotta save costs somewhere and Hyundai's done a good job of making the points that you touch feel high quality. Even the buttons and knobs in the center here, they all have a nice damping to them so they feel uh, a little bit more luxurious. The vents also feel really good to use and they feel like real metal. I'm not sure if they are or not, but they feel like it, so good job for them. The top of the dash is also 
soft touch and it's an interesting take on soft touch because they've done a different texture to it so it almost looks like a mix of carbon fiber or something i don't even know how to describe it but it's a it's a definitely a different texture um so hopefully it wears well over time which brings me to my next point that when it's brand new everything in a hyundai tends to look nice but over time it tends to wear rather poorly so i'm hoping hyundai has changed that because other than that i think it's a fantastic interior talking about interior features i'm going to do a separate video on interior features uh youtube short style video so check that out but it is loaded to the gills the main thing here that i think i like the most is the infotainment and hyundai's always done good infotainment they've included wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto at this price point which again is awesome and they've always been ahead of the curve with this infotainment stuff but shout out to them for doing this in this car even their stock infotainment not leveraging apple or google's approach is very smooth very fluid easy to use quick nice responses so i love 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 the infotainment also love the dash it's partially digital you have a digital screen on the on the right hand side and the rest is analog gauges but it looks very cool and it works so interior wise i think they've done a great job for styling and for features let's move on to practicality practicality rear seat super roomy you can see here i'm 510 59 I have lots of knee room, lots of leg room, lots of shoulder room. Headroom is a bit tighter compared to what a subcompact crossover may offer, but in every other dimension and every other aspect, it feels really roomy back here in the rear passenger seat. Similar story for the trunk. I thought the trunk wouldn't be super roomy because of the fastback styling of this car, but it's actually a really roomy and practical trunk to use. They could have gone with a hatch. I guess they don't want to because it throws customers off, but even with the sedan style opening, it's a really practical and convenient trunk space to use. And the seats fold down flat, which is always great. I think driver ergonomics can use some improvement in this car. Now, obviously, everybody physically is very different. So the experience I have may not be the same experience that anybody else has. So for me, it felt like my leg was always cramped, but on the top, it was perfect. So if I tried to push my seat back, all of a sudden I had more room for my legs, but then I felt like I was too far away on the top. But again, that's just for my personal body. I had my wife drive this car and she thought it was super comfortable and super um, easy to drive from an ergonomic perspective. So again, it's different for everybody. This is just my opinion, my take. Storage space in the front can be improved a little bit. Um, the door pockets are not really big enough to have a bottle but they put a bottle, the logo icon in there, but I don't really know what kind of bottle you'd put in there. Also, the center console, not the roomiest place to put stuff. It also doesn't slide back and forth or anything, so you don't really have any cool gimmicks. You do get this little cup holder attachment. I'm not sure if it's an ashtray, but I used it to kind of elevate small cups, and then it worked. And then the glove box also is not the roomiest. It's also not damped. Let's talk about driving dynamics now this has typically been a bit of a weak point for hyundai's because they're not the most dynamic or engaging cars to drive i think personally for this car for this generation hyundai elantra hyundai's done a great job of improving that i had the chance to drive this through some mountain roads on vancouver island and putting this car in sport mode which kind of changes the auto response and stiffens up the electric power steering a little bit it was a really fun car to drive i mean it's not the the funnest car in its class it's funnest a word it's not the most fun car in its class, but it's not bad. I mean, I had a good time. I had fun. I would say the handling is pretty good. It's uh, Hyundai's done a good job of improving it. Similar story on the highway. Very smooth, very stable, just an easy car to drive. Day-to-day -day driving in town, no one's going to have any problems. It's a comfortable car to drive, uh, easy to maneuver in, in cities, easy to maneuver in neighborhoods, stable on the highway, and pretty fun to drive when you want it. So. As an overall package, I think from a driving dynamics perspective, Hyundai's done a really great job. Let me talk about active safety because I think this is a feature that's more and more important for a lot of consumers these days. The active safety in this car is pretty phenomenal in my personal opinion. Uh, it doesn't have radar cruise, which I wish it did, and Toyota, it comes a standard, so Hyundai could have offered that in this preferred trim, but it doesn't have it. But what it does have is excellent active lane keep assist. So Toyota Active Lane Keep Assist is not very refined. You can kind of feel it pushing the car in and nudging the car in, and it's just not a very comfortable experience. And I didn't find it very confidence inspiring. I actually found it a bit disconcerting. But in this car, 
the active lane keep assist is phenomenal. You can't even detect it happening. I mean, it's just, you drive it and it's putting it back into the lane as it needs to, but it's almost imperceptible to the driver. So I think that's really great. You also have other active safety features like rear cross traffic alert, and blind spot detection, and they all work great. But the one I really wanted to call out was the active lane keep assist. Now in Canada, the preferred trim here comes with a two liter four cylinder engine with around 150 horsepower and around 150 foot pounds of torque. I think somewhere around there, I'll put the exact figures down here. And it's paired with continuously variable transmission or an intelligent variable transmission, IVT is what Hyundai calls it. Now, I think this transmission is actually pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of CVTs because they tend to feel a bit rubbery and they're not very um, satisfying when you put your foot down because it's just kind of drones on and on. But Hyundai has put some simulated gear shifts in this IVT. I had to check to make sure that this had an IVT because I actually felt like it was an automated transmission or an automatic transmission. Um, so I think they've done a good job with those gear shifts. Even in manual mode, it kind of changes those gears, those gears pretty quickly. Um, you know, again, combined with that two liter engine, it's decent power to kind of pass people and overtake people on the highway. In the city, you're not really gonna have any issues with that level of power. Smooth, comfortable, great transmission. I think it's a pretty good powertrain package that Hyundai has put together. And if you want, there's also a Hyundai Elantra N coming soon. And currently there's a Hyundai Elantra N line, which has, or a GT N line, there's something. There's some model of the Elantra that has a 1.6 liter turbo that has around 200 horsepower and a six speed DCT. That's definitely the one to get if you are a power fiend or if you want something a little bit more powerful. But for daily driving and everyday use, I think this is great. Talking about the powertrain, let's quickly talk about fuel economy. I'll put the stats up on this side right here, maybe on this side. I don't know, but, but take a look at them. The fuel economy is pretty good. Comparable for its class, not too bad. I'd be pretty happy with this level of fuel economy. Take a look. All right, so in conclusion, what is my recommendation or opinion on the Hyundai Elantra? I think if you're in the compact car segment, if you're looking for a compact car, then this is a great buy. I think its strengths are its styling, inside and out, its awesome infotainment systems, its great active safety features, and its value proposition. Hyundai often offers great finance and lease deals compared to its competitors. So if you're looking for a solid entry in this segment that might give you some better deals, then this is definitely the one to go for. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you pick the Hyundai Elantra in this particular classic car? It's not as popping of a category of cars it used to be in terms of number of entrants, but there's still some solid picks. I know for me personally, the Elantra would probably be in the top three. Let me know what you think below. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. More videos coming soon as always. Uh, see you next time, take care.